everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And today we are reviewing a nostalgia game. This is very nostalgic. For you, for your childhood, yeah. not for me. Now, it's about arcades. Did you go to arcades as I a kid? I did not, no. You did not? No. Were you a kid? <laughs> it's tomato. It's, did you just it's show it's up here as an adult? <laughs> I'm an adult. Like, I mean, when you were yes. born, you just kind of walked in your parents' house and you're like, I'm here. I'm here, yes. What, you guys called? Mm. What, what do you want? <laughs> Dinner ready? I did play with Legos. You did play with Legos? Mm. Were they called Legos in Australia? They were. Mm -hmm. Except it was written upside down. Haha, -ha, that's funny. And Barbies. I play with Legos and Barbies. There you go. Uh, yeah. So okay. There you go. Yeah. Shrimp on the Barbie. Shrimp on the Barbie. It's, a, it's an Australian thing, right? It's prawns on the Barbie, if you want to say it correctly, but whatever. whatever. Details. All right. So anyway. <laughs> Sidetrack. <laughs> right. okay. Nostalgia. And I'm a sucker for 8-bit um, video, uh, sorry, 8-bit board games. And you, yeah. not so much. Mm -mm. Because honestly, I've been burnt a lot on 8-bit board games. But this one is interesting because mm. this is arcade. This is literally, you are in an arcade and you get to play. Let's the name of this, mm -hmm. Joystick Heroes. So you are out there to become the best champion Champion in the arcade. There I was trying go. to think, Wizard or whatever? There was that movie of Fred Savage movie. about um, being good at the arcade. Did you see that? No. <laughs> you know why I asked. You, I was like, you knew the answer to that. No reason to ask that question. <laughs> so, okay, all right, yeah. so before we get into yeah. What we thought about the game, yes. let's see how it's played. So, ready? Hit up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. That. Do you get that? No. I think I do. It's I've so seen sad. you play it. Yeah. It's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are set up for a two player game now of Joystick Heroes, right here. So, this game simulates that you and your friends are at an arcade, and really, whoever leaves with the most prizes wins so it's all it's all about the prizes right here so these are the tokens every player starts off with 10 tokens and then you've got these red cubes here and these are your skills and then over here you're good you're going to be good at two different genres so right here for example i am good at these two which is sci-fi and the other one is classic so i'm good at classic and sci-fi i can upgrade these skills using tickets right here so three tickets would upgrade one of these skills two tickets would upgrade one of my genres now how do these skills come into play so like i said you start off with 10 coins in your bank and then everyone has 10 coins and you're going to start to play games so starting with the first player who has the pizza token look at this right here Woo. all right so you're going to take your player and you're going to place them at one of the machines. So these are the players here. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what. I'm going to try this machine. And then over here, this guy may want to go over here to this machine. Okay? So I use one of my tokens, take it, and I throw it in, well, towards this. And I'm playing this game. So this shows right here. I'm going to show you the games. These are the three it uses. It uses these skills and it's this genre. So if I check my sheet here, I have actually got one die in this, one die in this, and no die in here. So probably I would not go there. So let's say I actually went over here to sci-fi here. So this right here is one die here, one die, so three die. We're gonna ignore this up here for a moment. So here's what would happen. I would take three of the black die, and then I would take one of the game die right here. I would roll it. And now I add them all up. That is 300. That is very, very bad. Okay? So it also has the plus 100 on the game die here. So I have got right now 400. So I've got 400 points. So that would actually get me two tickets if I wanted to stop right here. So... One other thing is you get at the beginning of the game is you get these power-up cards or these power cards. So these give you different things like this is a reroll, this is a wizard that can add an extra scoring die. So there are different ways to mitigate your die rolls. So maybe right here I'd say, you know what, 400 is fine. I will take my two tickets and they go to my side. Then we play through, the other person plays his round, everybody brings it back. Pizza token gets handed to the next person, they place theirs out. You place yours out, and you keep going trying to beat these games. Now, let's go through really quickly how to play the game. The game is very simple. So that is how to play this one. You just have to beat these scores. If you get 800, you get three tickets. If you beat the high score, you get a prize and two tickets. So that's really good. But it's also hard to get. 
So I can trade these in. Say I want to trade these two in right here. To go ahead and add another cube right here. So if I ever played this game again right here, which you cannot play the game again immediately, you have to then let the line come through, do another machine, dude, right? So go over here, do this. So if I were to play this, I'm sorry, I should have put it here on the sci-fi. I would then get one, two, so I'd get one, two, and then I'd get two more die here. So now at this machine, I would be rolling four black die and one game die. Now this has positive values on it. It's also got the key. Now when the key rolls, you can actually use one of your power-up cards, not for the ability, but for the value up here in the corner. If you're so close to a high score, you can use the key and bump yourself up. This heart is an extra life, meaning that you can take, say, this zero and re-roll it. And you also have the option of rolling this die again, too. And take the higher score. Not the higher score, take the next score. So that's the way you roll. Now let's go into some of the symbols here. This one right here, this means this game is competitive. If it's competitive before you play the game, another player will get to move their person over to your game and you can go head to head. You still get the prizes here, but whoever wins and gets a higher score gets two extra tickets. This right here is a kind of a co-op game in a way which pretty much all that happens is you can use someone else's skill or a section genre instead of yours, give them a ticket and you can use there. So you might be able to roll more die. And then if you win, they also get two tickets. So it's kind of a shared victory, but not out of yours. They just get two extra tickets, but you are giving a benefit to the people there. And, oh, this also has one other thing here. You will notice let's ignore this. You're not gonna do this for a moment. These are levels. So if I went here, and say I'm level 500. So what I would do is I roll, count again the die, one, two, and because here I have one there. So let's say I've got this here. So I'm rolling four die, all right? So let's roll four and that, all right, there we go. So I have got, whoo, I've got 900. So I've just passed level one. So right now I could cash out and take two tickets or I can try level two. So although 900 doesn't push me up all the way, that's just for level one. Now I'm gonna go level two. I'm gonna push my luck. I'm gonna roll again. There we go, but this time I have got 400, 600, and then I've got a minus one right here. So that puts me to 500. So unless I have a power-up card that takes me over to 700, I just lost, and I don't get those two tickets. Got to push my luck and I have lost. So that is the way you do level one, level two, and level three. And also some of them actually give prizes out for the high scores. Then your tickets, like I said, it's all about the prizes at the end. You can cash your tickets in to upgrade your genres. Like I said, there's two tickets there, three tickets to go up to skills, or when you get five tickets, when you get five tickets, you can then use those to go over to the booth and get you a prize. And the prize is put over in your side. And at the end of everyone using their 10 coins, well, the person with the most prizes wins. So that is, in a, in a nutshell, there's a little bit more to it than that. That's how you play Joystick Heroes. One thing here is everything is spelled out here on a player aid, which is very nice. I love when they do this. So you've got a player aid, and I'm gonna show you some of these cards. It's really nice, like, um, they're very they're very parodies, like Grill Guys right here, this is the game Burger Bros, I assume. And then right here, Dragon's Doom. This was, oh, I forgot the game. I never got a chance to play it because it was like $2. I forgot, it's like the animation guy from Disney. Anyway, this right here, and then Delivery Man, I'm pretty sure it's probably Paperboy. But each of these right here, that's Tetris. So they're nice little parodies on actual games that you grew up with or you could see in the arcade. That's one of the coolest parts about this game is being able to set them up. And like I said, this is set up for two players. So there are six machines. And as you get up to more players, I think, I believe it goes up to six, you have more machines and you set up your arcade and you can jump from place to place. So, okay, so that is pretty much how you play Joystick Heroes. Let's leave the arcade and go back and see what we thought about it. 
Okay, so that is how you play the game Joystick Hero. Mm. So you can be a Joystick Hero or a Joystick Zero. Ooh. See what I did there? I did. That was nice. All right, component-wise. Yeah. Um, components. Oh, amazing. It's great. Yeah, they did a great job. I like how the cards were actually like thick cards, the pieces that you're playing with, the like not little flimsy things. They did a really good job with the components here. I like that. They really did. Mm. And it's one of those that like the little prizes, um, they differ, like whether they're candy, their prizes, yeah. whatever. That doesn't matter. It's just flavorful. Yeah. And it's just, but I do, go ahead. I was going to say, I did really like that touch of adding the prizes. I did I too. felt like that was very thematic. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And the little tokens, putting them out there. Yeah. I mean, this is one thing I wouldn't have little metal tokens for. Just you can put it back and forth. I liked the tickets too because like I've been to Chuck E. Cheese enough to know that your tickets mean prizes. So I liked how that all kind of connected together. That was really good how they did that. So Chuck E. Cheese, did you go as an adult or a kid? I went as an adult. I was like 26. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. So, um, so, I know. and also, I tried to, when I was playing this game, imagine I was like Max in Stranger Things. That's what I, that that's was what I did. Exactly. So there it. you go. That, if that helps you as, a, as someone who doesn't play arcade things, that's what I was Max. So now yeah. for you to have played mm. the arcade, it's mm. funny how seeing these parody names, and there are so many different parody names of these. Like for instance, uh, Titan Rage right here. Mm -hmm. This is Rampage. Then you got Grill Guys, which is I think Burger Burger Bros or something. Anyway, so mm -hmm. all of these have different, they're based on different arcade games. I'm glad you told me that. I had no idea. Okay, most of you guys will get that, which okay. it's, it's really fun to see. Oh, I used to play Joust as a kid, but this is called whatever. Mm -hmm. So that right there is fun. But as you know, that whole nostalgia, the funny things you read, that's going to only last a couple of plays. Yeah. So does this game actually hit it as far as like, is it worth hitting your collection? Yes. And I don't know. So pretty much, okay, the, the things I like about it mm -hmm. is when you deal out those cards mm -hmm. and you arrange your arcade, that itself is kind of fun. Because it, it grows depending on how many players you have. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of putting your player at the arcade, I'm going to play this game next, this game, this game, having some co-op and some competitive was kind of fun. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite aspect of it, but I'm okay with that. Was kind of fun for me. <laughs> yeah, that when we did that, it was just kind of annoying. I was like, ugh, okay, fine, we'll do this. It was fun for me. But I, right. yeah. Okay, you know. <laughs> but no, so mm -hmm. so that was your favorite. I did I did like going to like the card and putting my little standee on it, going to the card and doing that. That was fun. I did like that. That was good. Yeah, and yeah. also, did you like how a lot of the, some of the games would actually, you just play it once and mm -hmm. your score depending on what you got. Yeah. But then the other ones, there's a push your luck element when you would go level one. I... I did really like those ones where it was kind of like you got level one, level two, level. I did like the push your luck kind of thing too, and that was a really nice addition that they did to the right. game. They, it wasn't just straight, just roll your dice. This is the score you get. These are the tickets you get. The the push your luck of those level. And when we laid out our arcade, there was only one that was the push your luck. And then I noticed both you and I we preferred to do that one. There was always someone right. on that card because it was really fun. The push your luck mm. is really fun because you kind yeah. of you. And you get burnt because you're you like, do. I can do it. I can do mm. it next time. You're like, oh, I scored really good on this yeah. level. But the, and you keep going up. And that is really a fun. And you also, it's pretty fun even watching that. Mm. You're like, oof, you're going to do it? You're going to try level three? <laughs> and it's like, oh, man, you got a bad roll. Yeah. And then they throw it in that power-up card, lets them go run back and do it again. And I mean, and, okay, so the power-up cards, I really like the power-up cards because be able to play those out there and do yeah. different things as far as like, there was one that allowed me to stay at the same machine twice mm -hmm. or boot you from a machine or re-roll your die. I liked the one that you could set your die to 300. Yeah, I, like I never that. got that one. That one was really good. I did like that addition that they added to it too. And then, you know, the end of the round, you would get a new one or whatever. I did, that was a, they did a nice job just kind of making it more complex if you wanted it to be complex. Right. Or if you wanted just to keep it a simple dice rolling game, you could do that too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. And then, then there was also, there were also choices to make once you got your tickets. Yeah. You kind of had to see when the end is coming mm. because did you want to upgrade your skills? Or did you want to go ahead and save this for prizes? Because it's all about the prizes at yes. the end. It's all about how many prizes. You want to keep those tickets for those, but cash them in now because then you can play a game that actually gets you prizes right off the bat if you get the high score. And there's a lot going back and forth. There's a lot of decision making here, which I do really like. Now, I also liked how it was really dice rolling, which is luck based. And I know that sometimes right. can be you know, a problem for some people. But I, in this t in this scenario, I didn't mind it. I liked it. I thought it was very thematic. 
It was. And yeah. it's, okay, so now we've talked about the positive, yes. what we like about the game. Now, yeah. negative-wise, like you mentioned, this game is swingy. Yes. And it is, you can plan for all you want to. You can have seven, we've had times where we, we had seven die out mm-hmm. there. And you just roll poorly. You yeah. got zero, 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 zero. You've got five zeros. Then. And it just, yeah. it just happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that right there, and that's going to turn people off a lot. Yes. And for us, it probably did lower, it lowered my score a bit because mm-hmm. you can mitigate it to a point but it's always going to be very dice heavy. It is, yes, correct. One thing I was gonna say, so we played this with two players, but I noticed it can play out with six. And I can see right. there's that higher play count, there's gonna be a lot of downtime. There is, yeah. Particularly because... if you're doing the card that has the levels, when you're rolling your dice three or four times, there's gonna be some downtime there for that higher play. But I think at two, it was perfect. It yeah. made it quick, it made it enjoyable, and, and it was fun. And we played it at three mm-hmm. or four, and, and it, it was it worked mm-hmm. well then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then at five or six, I think it could get a bit yes. long as you're waiting for it yeah. to go. Mm-hmm. But again, if it's one of those games you play as an activity, it's mm-hmm. fun to cheer, to cheer it on. So if you don't take it seriously, this is a fun game. And honestly, I think that's what they were going for. It is Correct. a very, very light game. Yes. Now, it might be, at two players, it's about fine. Three, maybe it's okay to sweet spot. But mm-hmm. then once you get to five or six, the ten, you know, it may be a bit long. Even yes. with two players, the ten tokens might be a bit long. I don't know, but at more players, it probably would kind of overstay its welcome a bit. Yeah, I, I would definitely feel like that too. That would be my only kind of you know thing I would want to point out with this. That you know, like I said, that higher play account, I can tell. Particularly when you're waiting for people to do the dice rolls and stuff, it can sometimes just get a little frustrating. Right, and then also one thing I do, I do wish is that first flop of the of the machines yeah. is really fun. Mm-hmm. You get to see the arcade and all that. I kind of wish halfway through the game there was like some where some machines would go out, more machines would come in. I remember playing going, oh, well, these are the machines the whole time. Like, oh, that's a shame. Like, I wish there was a way to change them out. Right, because like yes. if you upgrade certain genres, there aren't any genres in there. So if somebody's really high on those and that, so that yeah. I really think mm. being able to take some machines out and put some machines in would help, help kind of add some variety to it. And yeah. also some surprise about yeah. seeing something come in. It's like, oh, yeah. all of a sudden I'm good at that. That's going to be a great machine mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. which is the way it used to work in an arcade. Remember those yes. days when they pulled a new game and you're like, I'm good at this? I have no idea. I remember that from Changing Things though. So, hey, there you go. Yeah. Here so, all right. So anyway, mm-hmm. so Joystick Heroes, it is a very light <laughs> yes. game. It does hit that exactly what you want to hit. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So what would you give this game? I would give this game. And like I said, it's, they did such a fantastic job of theming this game. It's very somatic. It is. Yeah, it and is. I like that. I can appreciate that. And I had fun playing it, even though it's not something that I, like, I'm, you know, reliving my childhood or anything like that. I did really, really like this game. You liked it more than I thought you would. Yeah, I did. And I did enjoy it. it's fun. Mm. It's light. So what's yes. your number on it? Seven. 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 All right. I would mm-hmm. actually give it a 7.5. Because, and I've been going back and forth on that. I feel like I, should, I could go higher. I could go lower. But this is one that, honestly, if it's people that have played the arcade, you know, grew up in the arcade, things like that, it's something fun to go out and hit the table with them. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's not a heavy game at all, no. but it's one of those fun. And also, it comes out quick. Yeah, it's very easy just to shuffle them up, put it out there, arrange yeah. it up there, get by their tokens. Let's go to town. Yeah. You know, it's just really fun and nice to put out there. Yeah. So okay, so that is Joystick Hero. Here it is. Ta-da. So, Yes, so we are probably going to turn the video off now and leave and take this girl to an arcade. Oh, we should. Let's do that now. We're not going to do that. I don't even know if there are arcades anymore. Are there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. In the mall. Are there malls anymore? Yeah, I don't even know that either. Whoo! Okay. There are outdoor malls, but I don't even know if they have arcades in them. Oh, well. So many questions. They don't have an arcade in an outdoor mall. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. I only know outdoor malls. All right. Hey, hey, thanks, guys. I'm Joey. I'm Alex. All right. Bye. Bye.